dar inicio a este tercer encuentro de las charlas que, que está organizando la Comisión de Petrología Ignea y Metamórfica de la Asociación Geológica Argentina. Les damos la bienvenida a todos y le damos un agradecimiento muy especial al doctor Arne Wilner por haber aceptado la invitación de dar esta charla para todos nosotros. Bueno, eh, muchas gracias, Flor, eh, y bienvenidos uh, a todos desde Alemania. Es, uh, era, ya es la tarde aquí y uh, había un um, lindo día de verano. Um, eh, eh, disculpen, por favor, los eh, problemas técnicos y disculpen, además, que voy a seguir a hablar en inglés y simplemente porque ya por mucho tiempo sin contacto con el mundo suramericano me siento más fluido en, en inglés. <risa> um, ok, voy a hablar eh, sobre la, la colisión de chilena y un inter... Uh, 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 voy a, uh, uh, I will uh, talk about uh, um, the collision, the Late Devonian collision of Chilenia and an interrelated process um, of the early Carboniferous initiation of subduction in Chile. So uh, these uh, processes give further information about the existence of Chilenia, I think. So I um, uh, choose a sort of introductory figures Uh, two photos from the uh, uh, Cordillera Principal, um, con vista de, uh, with uh, uh, the view, uh, the view seen from uh, the Chile, uh, Chile and from Argentina on the uh, right side. Um, this massive block of mountains um, hide it enormously lot of important information on the uh, Andean basement. Moreover, it's a sort of wall, a wall um, not only in the physical sense, but also in the mental sense. So workers on either side quite often do not look on the other side. So I had the great opportunity to work on both sides of the end uh, of this uh, uh, principal cordillera and um, Uh, so I feel justified to make a sort of synthesis of this, uh, uh, my former work. Uh, so in uh, uh, the South American continent, in the uh, area of Argentina and Chile, uh, was growing in, during uh, the Paleozoic times in a very classical view. It started in... Um, the east uh, with a big uh, accretionary prism in the uh, late um, Protozoic Cambrian times. This prism was incorporated partly also in a, a magmatic arc. This is all um, the Pampine originally that likely ended with a um, collision of a small um, uh, microcontinent. So in the whole was Uh, later in the Ordovician, uh, incorporated in the enormously wide um, uh, Fermatinian magmatic arc. Um, um, and uh, during the uh, activity of the uh, Fermatinian arc, uh, the uh, uh, continent, a microcontinent called Kuliania, collided. Um, and in the Western um, Pampin Sierras, Uh, we have a sort of collisional uh, uh, wedge. Um, uh, and uh, then afterwards, sorry. Uh, we have a sort of uh, 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 collisional wedge. And then uh, the leading margin of uh, uh, South America, after this collision, jumped on the uh, western side of the uh, pre cordillera Here, another collisional belt developed. And uh, then, after uh, late Devonian times, another jump of the leading margin occurred to the uh, uh, present Pacific margin. So, the... Um, 
<coughs> the continent grew by accretion and also by collision of microcontinents. So, um, I will talk about uh, uh, these latter two uh, geodynamic environments, the collisional belt and uh, the um, uh, late Paleozoic um, active margin. <coughs> And uh, in between, we or all this happened around a supposed uh, um, microcontinent of Chilenia. I will not talk about um, the geochemical uh, work, in intensive geochemical work done on magmas that intru later intruded this area, um, where. Um, uh, studies of magma contamination of xenocrist of uh, xenolith uh, showed that the hole is underlain actually by mesoproterozoic basement. This is nothing uh, special because uh, the, the whole uh, margin, Andean margin, or the, the whole Andes, more or less, are underlain by mesoprotozoic uh, basement. And this is also not unusual, because we know since, at least since the work of Iron Dial in the 1990s, uh, that South America was once uh, attached to uh, Laurentia across the uh, Granvillian origin in the um, macrocontinent of uh, Rodinia, and uh, when this broke apart, a lot of uh, small microcontinents were uh, released. Okay, let's go first uh, to the uh, supposed uh, collisional belt on the western edge of the present Precordillera. So it was uh, uh, Victor Ramos in the 1990s who observed a chain of uh, ophiolitic rocks um, along uh, that uh, that margin, and he proposed a, a collision um, um, between uh, what he called a Kuyania um, microcontinent, and uh, he introduced first a Chilenia microcontinent. Um, so, uh, I will not talk about the uh, geochemical evidence or the geochemical content of these ophiolitic rocks. There is a, a vast amount of uh, work done by Graciela Vukovic, by uh, Flor Boedo um, uh, and others. Um, finally showing that there are a lot of uh, different sorts of mob uh, basalt present from different ages and they could show that even a, a time sequence of uh, evolution uh, of uh, these um, uh, former basaltic rocks from a rifted margin to a full uh, uh, oceanic stage. So this all is um, uh, reconstruction of uh, uh, of uh, an evolution uh, prior to collision. So still, people are still questioning, They're questioning still the existence of uh, a collisional wedge, and they are still uh, questioning an existence of Chilenia. So I even was also earlier on when I only worked in, in, in Chile, um, a bit skeptical and thought, oh, uh, ophiolitic rocks also may occur in, uh, accretion, in an accretionary prism. And why is it not the start of an accretion that uh, propagated to, to the present margin? So um, I went to the lowermost structure, lowermost part of this uh, belt that is called was called uh, Mafic Ultra Mafic Belt by uh, Victor Ramos. Um, and here we have the um, uh, um, rocks in a metamorphic, uh, uh, medium grade, uh, we have medium grade metamorphic rocks, and whereas uh, the other um, remnants of this uh, wedge are in a, a relatively low metamorphic grade. Okay, what happens here? Uh, we studied uh, the major rock types, uh, garnet amphiboloid, garnet mica schist. <clears throat> um, we uh, 
applied two different methods to get PT conditions. Um, we started with uh, uh, multivariant uh, equilibria uh, method, uh, combining um, uh, the uh, compositions of uh, mineral cores and rims. Um, and later on, we also applied uh, a section approach. With that one, we've much easier uh, it's much easier to get uh, PT conditions, for example, of garnet cores, garnet rims, uh, by simply intersecting compositional isoplasts. So, what we ended in was uh, 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 a clockwise PT pass with PT uh, conditions of about 13, 14 K bar, around uh, uh, 500. Uh, uh, degrees Celsius, and then uh, a decompression pass with slight heating. And later on, uh, cooling at lower, uh, during uh, exhumation to lower pressures. Um, okay, uh, the same PT pass uh, could be um, the same maximum condition could be uh, observed in both different types of rocks we see there. And we dated peak metamorphism um, by uh, a method um, that involves garnet, uh, lutetium hafnium uh, of, uh, we produce lutetium hafnium isochrons, um, a mineral isochrons, and got uh, uh, four isochrons, uh, four, four point, uh, three four point uh, isochrons with an age around 390 uh, million years. So uh, quite hard uh, data. Um, uh, white mica age, argon argon ages are, are at around 350. Uh, maybe uh, these are cooling ages, maybe, uh, uh, and I would see it now uh, like this. Uh, uh, um, a retrograde um, deformation, and later um, a fission track uh, uh, zircon um, ages, uh, dating the cooling under 280 degrees. So from this we can derive uh, exhumation rate that exceeds one millimeter per year. That is much higher than average erosion rates, and it's quite typical found in collisional wedges. The whole ends, by the way, um, in, in that area with post-collisional granitoids that are uh, lower, um, uh, uh, lower carboniferous. Okay, so what does this mean? What does this um, high pressure condition of 12 to 14 k, k bar uh, and uh, temperatures around uh, 500 degrees mean? Uh, considering two alternatives, collisional wedge or accretional prism. These are actually the, the main um, uh, geodynamic environments where high pressure rocks occur. So these high pressure conditions overprint in the Guagras complex overprinted neuritic sediments with a maximum de depositional age of around uh, 560 million years. So it's from uh, information from your uh, dating uh, detrital zircons. And they also contain uh, Venian Cambrian Akritake. So same conditions were derived, um, same high pressure conditions were derived from garnet amphibolite, and these have protolases with uh, um, chemical um, morph signatures and uh, uh, samarium neodymium hurok isochron age of 650 million years. So there is a t considerable time gap uh, between deposition at a neoprotozoic passive margin and late Devonian uh, high pressure metamorphism. Um, the peak of metamorphism exceeds uh, 10 k bar. And we also observed an early decompression heating pass. And all these point to an evolution uh, in a collisional wedge. Just by contrast, in a Accretional prism. We get turbiditic trench sediments that are accreted and overprinted um, 
um, and they were just deposited slightly before the metamorphic imprint. Peak pressures hard in accretionary prisms hardly exceed uh, 10 k bar. Uh, recent and sub recent accretionary prisms have a maximum depth of 40 kilometers. And as we will see later, PT paths in accretionary prisms are characterized by decompression cooling paths. So, and what does the H of the high pressure metamorphic peak? Uh, uh, in the Gorgoras collision complex mean. So we have uh, 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 quite hard ages. And these ages, around 390 million years, are the oldest so far known ages of high pressure metamorphism in, the, in this particular collisional wedge. They indicate when these rocks reached maximum boil. So but initiation of collision between Chilenia and Koyania must have been slightly before, so uh, I assume a period around 400 to 405 million years appears quite realistic due to some potassium argon ages in the pre cordillera sediments, and uh, this is relatively new, abundant argon-argon white mica ages in the Sierra Pie de Palo, which at that time was in the Foland area uh, during the collision. And here these ages indicate late retrograde uh, deformation. So you see here a collection of all uh, um, published and still my still unpublished uh, uh, data in the Sierra Pie de Palo. And here we see a a uh, uh, quite pronounced 405 million year peak. Okay, all this belongs to the uh, Ch Chanic orogenic phase, and we can say the Chanic orogenic phase is uh, evidence of a continent, uh, microcontinent collision. Um, Florencia Boedo also studied uh, mm, mm, PT conditions. Uh, in the Penasco formation or division formation that certainly belong to the overriding uh, Koyania plate, um, got PT conditions that are uh, on the same low uh, metamorphic gradient of 10 uh, uh, degrees Celsius per kilometer as our Gorgoras rocks. Um, in another area, uh, in the fo Foland, uh, in the Jabba Loka formation, um, other people got uh, uh, um, found low um, P and T conditions. So this is these are not from a part uh, of the actual collisional wedge. And I also draw your Briefly, your attention on um, condition and dating by Martinez in some area near San Carlos de Bariloche um, with much higher pressures and the same age of 390 uh, million years. I will come to this uh, much later at the end of the talk. Okay, a brief uh, uh, scenario. Uh, what collided are two uh, um, margins, two rifted margins. End collision must have been flat. Always uh, uh, arcs are pointed out, uh, well, you have a collision and there is no magmatic arc. So, uh, for some people it seems to be a natural law, but uh, Every Andean geologist knows uh, that uh, there are amagmatic segments where uh, 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 subduction is uh, uh, um, uh, is flat. So, if you have a flat amagmatic uh, subduction, you can also have a flat uh, subduction, uh, a flat uh, collision. A very good example for this are the Alps. Uh, the Alps in the Alps, the the upper. Um, uh, plate, the Adriatic plate, does not contain any uh, magma uh, magmatic arc. So, um, so collision probably even uh, or the both continents were uh, around 400 uh, million years uh, quite near 
but at uh, say 380 million years uh, there was certainly a full collision and in the collisional wedge uh, we get mixture of both uh, the upper and lower plate so <clears throat> um, so if we have a continent uh, collision and we say it's a collision between uh, Trilenia and Guyania. There must be on the other side of this microcontinent, there must be a passive margin. And uh, some later time, this passive margin must be uh, converted to an active margin. And this is what we actually see in the Pacific margin of uh, Chile. Um, all this start, there starts around uh, 340 million years and on Chilean territory there is nothing, absolutely nothing pre-carboniferous to be seen. Uh, uh, in, in, um, uh, in, actually in central Chile. So, so by this we leave the um, collisional complex in the Goa grass in the front cordillera and we move on <clears throat> uh, to the Chilean side, in the um, accretional prison in Chile, on the uh, in the coastal cordillera of, of Chile. And in this marvelous side, we also have a very uh, peculiar rock. And this rock occurs only at three different points in the whole uh, central Chile. Uh, so, from the area about uh, uh, Los Velos uh, down to, per uh, um, to uh, Puerto Montt. So, these special rocks are relic rocks from the subduction channel um, within these late Paleozoic accretionary prison. Uh, and these rocks show the highest PT conditions compared to the surrounding rocks in the accretionary prism, the highest ages of metamorphism and an anti-clockwise PT pass. And these conditions all are typical for the initiation of metamorphism. So, uh, I will have a closer look to a occurrence in uh, near in Los Pabilos, near uh, Valdivia, already in the uh, uh, 1980s, um, this uh, uh, a rock, uh, this rock was um, uh, 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 found, uh, described, and incidentally studied by Terence Cato. Um, here we have uh, an overprint of two completely different. Um, uh, metamorphic assemblages, um, an assemblage with garnet, hornblende, true tile, epidote is overprinted by a later one with chloride, titanite, fingite, uh, glaucophane. So with uh, multi um, um, equilibria approach, we got uh, PT conditions for the first um, stage at around uh, 15k bar and uh, temperatures up to uh, 700 degrees and then for the second uh, assemblage the blue schist assemblage uh, we get similar peak uh, pt conditions and then we can also trace a, a cooling uh, decompression pass so it's a sort of initiation of, or it's a sort of part of an anti-clockwise PT pass. So we dated the um, first stage with lotation hafnium, garnet, uh, um, uh, or mineral uh, isochron at 340 million years. Unfortunately, this age is only published in an extended abstract, and I did not mention it to uh, manage to um, publish it uh, in the meantime. And um, in earlier, uh, rubidium strontium mineral isochrome involving uh, white mica, so dating the blue schist assemblage, uh, uh, yielded an age of 305 million years. Uh, a later um, uh, and early um, PT pseudosection approach, here only seen in a uh, 
simplified version was showing the uh, PT fields of uh, respective uh, min uh, minerals. Uh, we found uh, we got a prograde PT pass from composition of uh, amphiboles included in garnet. And we could also uh, reconstruct the um, uh, um, the, the uh, early cooling, uh, isobaric co cooling path. So, in total, we have an anticlockwise PT pulse. So, th these two ages, the garnet hornblend of the garnet hornblend assemblage and the uh, uh, fingered glaucophen assemblage, uh, and also we have from the uh, surrounding garnet mica schist um, uh, ages of 305 and 340 million years are much higher than in this, this, uh, the um, metamorphic ages in the surrounding accretionary prism, which are around uh, 250 to uh, 260 million years. Okay. What does this mean? Uh, how does, uh, uh, what scenario is standing behind these special rock types? How can we explain these special rock types? Um, and instead of a um, simple diagram, I will present you with a small animation of a modeling by my colleague uh, uh, Taras Geria uh, from 2003. Um, he produced a numerical modeling involving uh, uh, an uh, collision of oceanic or subduction of oceanic crust with low oceanic crust uh, involving some sediments, a realistic uh, uh, thermal um, uh, uh, grid. Uh, he has uh, the uh, uh, hydration of um, the mantle uh, due to fluid infiltration could also have been modeled. Uh, the uh, subduction was initiated by introducing a weak initial weak zone, and uh, we also got uh, 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 also. Uh, realistic um, subduction rates were ingressed into this uh, modeling. So we start modeling um, and we can observe here a point that is subducted first during in, in initiation of subduction. During uh, subduction we see here in the uh, PT pass that uh, it is this rock is continuously heated. It's heated because um, um, the mantle wedge is still hot. It uh, arrives at its f finally uh, destination at uh, pressures around 20 k bar. And then an isobaric cooling um, starts because more cold material is subducted beneath that rock. So the isobaric cooling continues as more cold material is um, uh, thrusted underneath. And then we can now observe the subduction of a point that is later subducted. It also gets heated and meets uh, the um, early subducted rock, but from that on, rocks get uh, exhumed along a path that is uh, shows um, cooling with decompression. And after um, about 26 million years, these rocks meet uh, depths that uh, are according to an accretionary prism. Okay. Coming back to the um, distribution of these uh, subductional channel rocks, um, the uh, age, the peak ages um, uh, are always much older than the ages in the surrounding rocks. Here in, in all three um, 
uh, occurrences. Um, the oldest ages are in Los Barbados with 340 million years. In the uh, in near Pechilemo, um, the uh, initiation must have been before 320. In the north, before 307 million years. These ages derived from white mica argon argon uh, dating. And I'm sure. Uh, so far, nobody had the idea to date the, the garnet, either by Lutetium hafnium or uh, Neodymium samarium, that actually the, um, there are still older ages in these rocks present. Anyway, we have an idea when uh, the subduction started due to these rocks um, that only uh, originate at the beginning of subduction. Similar situation uh, uh, seen now in, in many places in the Caribbean, uh, in the Franciscan of North America, and I recently got uh, to know um, many places in, in the Himalayas uh, where the similar uh, uh, story has happened. So, uh, what's um, uh, how does the uh, story continue? We see uh, in this map that there are two distinct belts, so-called Western and so-called Eastern belt, and these are characterized by very different modes of accretion. Uh, in the northern segment, these have so uh, somewhat different ages, but uh, uh, they uh, are uh, almost the same, the Arayan and uh, formation in Chapa metamorphic co complex. So, in the ni 1990s, um, Nina Korkowski in Potsdam um, um, uh, made uh, quite a lot of analog modeling with uh, uh, sand, in a sort of sandbox analog modeling. Uh, studying the accretion process, and it was um, Johannes Glotny who was the first to compare these um, results uh, with uh, accretion complex in the uh, Valdivia area. So, what happens here? We see that the first uh, frontal accretion produces folds and, and thrusts, and um, so the... the um, um, uh, the, the, the accretion prism is horizontally pro propagating towards the trench, the thickening flow field, uh, um, uh, the uh, final compression is more or less horizontal. And with time in, in the uh, sandbox modeling, introducing uh, uh, increasing internal friction, material is uh, subducted underneath and basally accreted. Basal accretion is uh, um, in a more or less subvertical um, a compression sort of, of uh, uh, flattening uh, or a, a thinning flow field. So in, in Chile, we, we find both an uh, early frontal accretion, uh, the eastern series, and then uh, uh, followed by the basal accretion. So how does it look like in the eastern series? We find uh, first folding of bedding planes of these uh, gray wackies that were deposited in the trench uh, with axial plane foliation. Um, and even here in this section, we see a, a second deformation that is already a sort of uh, uh, indicating a sort of a flattening. Uh, by contrast, in the Western series, uh, we observe the uh, basal accretion mode that is characterized by a flat lying uh, transposition foliation. Um, uh, internal uh, tight to uh, sub-horizontal um, um, uh, uh, sub-horizontal folding. Uh, even uh, the um, there, there are uh, uh, quartz veins that originated during prograde metamorphism, even in the uh, diagenetic stage, are uh, isoclinally folded. So this is a, a strong transposition uh, foliation and 
actually more or less an coaxial uh, uh, deformation. There are only some very local uh, shear bands uh, can be observed. Um, so uh, when this, this change of frontal to basal uh, accretion occur, um, for dating we can observe ages of maximum sedimentation. Um, these ages derive from uh, uh, uranium lead uh, dating of zircon. Um, in all maximum sedimentation ages in the frontally and basally accreted rocks are carboniferous. In the frontally accreted, they are slightly older than in the uh, basally accreted uh, units. The youngest one we observe in the uh, front, uh, basally um, uh, 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 accreted uh, to upper complex was 311 million years. So uh, the um, if we observe the um, peak of uh, age of peak of metamorphism, which is equivalent to the accretion process, um, we uh, uh, see the oldest um, uh, age of 308 million years in the Western series. Um, the Eastern series in, in the north are not overprinted by uh, later. Uh, high temperature metamorphism, uh, but the eastern series, um, um, oh, these are not overprinted, but the eastern series in um, the southern segments are overprinted at 300 million years, as we uh, uh, will see in the uh, uh, in the following, and um, in the frontally accreted and non-overprinted areas in uh, the northern section, we must derive an age uh, of more than 310 million years for the first um, frontal accretion. This age comes from Zirken uh, fission track uh, dating. Argon-argon dating in that area is strongly overprinted by Mesozoic uh, processes. Okay, so from this age, from this age and this age, we can de uh, uh, um, derive that 308 million years is more or less the point uh, where these um, accretion modes changed. There's only one section in entire central Chile uh, near Constitución, a uh, uh, section uh, along the Rio Marula River, where we can actually in the field observe the transition from bo uh, between both uh, um, accretion modes. Everywhere else this sequence is somehow interrupted. So we, here we can uh, uh, have, have a full profile and uh, Peter Richter made an intensive study of final strain um, parameters and found that strain is strongly increasing and continuously increasing from east, from the eastern series to the west, into the uh, western series, uh, say from uh, the stark um, shading to uh, the uh, more whitish colors. Um, this continuous um, um, evolution is interrupted elsewhere, like here in this, uh, along this uh, post-carboniferous uh, fault. Um, and uh, in uh, also there are many other areas where this transition is simply uh, covered by younger rocks. We have also an idea why this uh, um, accretion mode changed. Um, here we see two PT pseudo sections uh, that are based on uh, Greybecky compositions here of an average uh, metamorphosed Greybecky, here of a Greybecky from the uh, Western series in Chile. 
um, shown are isoplas of uh, water in solids in weight percentage. So these isoplas show how the dehydration is distributed in the uh, PT field. And we see that it's not randomly distributed, but there is at low temperatures, there is a zone of maximum dehydration. So this is roughly the same in both um, uh, rocks. Uh, uh, we could also show that it's the same in hydrated um, metabasides. <clears throat> and if we ingress um, 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 the uh, uh, prograde PT pass, or suppose prograde PT pass of uh, uh, the frontal accreted rocks and the basally accreted rocks, we see that the frontally accreted rocks uh, were submerged under a higher um, metamorphic gradient. That means these rocks reached the, uh, the, the maximal depths when um, they crossed the, the dehydration zone. So water is released. This uh, release of water leads to softening of the rocks and aids accretion. Uh, later, the uh, isotherm uh, cooled and um, the uh, basally accreted rocks could get into a, in, uh, into a greater depth and reached uh, the uh, zone of dehydration at much uh, at a deeper depth and a higher temperature. So, um, it appears that the uh, um, in nature, the different accretion modes depends on when the uh, on on the um, uh, metamorphic gradient in subduction channel rocks, for example, uh, the um, um, rocks can be uh, submerged under a much lower metamorphic gradient uh, to to much greater depths. So, and the whole actually. Uh, um, process uh, that is behind is a continuous cooling onto the convergent margin that um, is observed uh, in many other uh, convergent margins uh, worldwide, a, a common process. So back to the um, metamorphism. Um, the high pressure overprint um, we find in uh, essentially in the Western series. In the eastern series, in most of central Chile, uh, has a uh, high temperature, low pressure overprint. This we, we see here in this uh, figure, for example, in uh, ISO uh, grades uh, of uh, uh, storal uh, uh, and elucite isograde passes to a silimanite isograde and finally to a, co a, a cordurite garnet. Uh, um, K feldspar isograde, so there is increasing metamorphism at low pressure towards the um, intruding uh, um, uh, late Paleozoic uh, batholis. So this observation uh, were made, made quite early. Um, in early stage, the the high pressure metamorphism was recognized by some. A uh, few findings of uh, blue schist, and people already uh, thought that this would be a typical example for a paired metamorphic belt. But to really to fit this um, definition, uh, we need uh, dating. And uh, if uh, we have a look um, first at the conditions of these rocks and what rocks are uh, at all in the Western series, we have seen the um, there is a, a huge amount of metagravekes. Um, blue schist lenses are included. These blue schist lenses uh, in, in, um, are quite uh, frequently overprinted by uh, green schist facies metamorphism. Uh, however, 90% of all uh, metabasides in the Western series are um, a green schist, here with relic pillow um, uh, structures. Um, 
and um, there are also some more rare rocks like uh, uh, black schist with uh, spessartine uh, quartzites, also known as corticules. So these are enrichments of manganese and uh, iron, uh, likely from um, uh, from uh, hydrothermal activity or simply precipitation from the uh, at the um, uh, ocean floor. Um, the high pressure indicator in the blue schist, of course, is glaucophane. Glaucophane is missing in the green schist. The peak uh, uh, high pressure uh, mineral in the green schist is a calcium sodium uh, uh, amphibole called windscheid. So windscheid is uh, typical for these high pressure granges. These high pressure granges, as I will show, have never been uh, uh, blue schist. There is uh, simply both were accreted in the accretional prism, but there is a definite uh, pressure temperature uh, difference between them. Another high pressure in in indicator is fengite in both. Um, uh, metabasides and also in the uh, metagravekis. <clears throat> Fengite is uh, uh, a white mica with its eye contents exceeding 3.2 per formula unit in um, the accretion of prism here. Uh, they even reach 3.5 um, uh, SI per formula unit. So this already indicates quite elevated pressures. Again, with a, uh, originally with a uh, multivariant uh, uh, um, uh, equilibrium approach involving assemblages with white mica, amphibole, chloride, epidote, and quartz, um, we got, uh, could derive uh, uh, points along a, a PT pass, um, a, a typical um, uh, or maximum conditions of uh, around uh, 10, uh, 10 to 12 k bar in the blue schist and about 8 to 10 k bar in the um, in the green schist occurred and in both uh, there are uh, we can observe a, a, a cooling a decompression paths. So this is quite typical for accretional prisms, but still both. Uh, different meta uh, basalts come from a different uh, depths. Uh, this we could also firm, confirm already with a quite early um, uh, PT pseudo section um, here, um, based on uh, on green schist composition and on a blue schist composition. That there is a transition zone between. Uh, sodium amphiboles and calcium amphiboles in this transition zone is uh, um, at the same PT conditions in, in both cases. So uh, the sodium amphibole actually, uh, uh, the, the, the blue schist um, must have um, occurred at, uh, must have been overprinted at higher pressures than the green schists. Uh, later on, we could, with uh, later PT pseudo section, we could um, show that uh, actually in this transitional field, uh, there uh, we can find compositions, uh, calcium, sodium, amphibole compositions. So, uh, so what happened to the eastern series? How were they uh, metamorphosed? Um, there are two metamorphic stages. One stage, an early stage during uh, uh, frontal accretion. This is difficult to get um, because mostly, as I said, in central Chile, um, eastern series is overprinted by this high temperature metamorphism. Um, in, in the northern section near Los Vilos, uh, in the Ariane formation, we do not see this high temperature metamorphism, and we got uh, uh, at least uh, uh, an idea about the uh, pressures. They are um, uh, between um, four and five uh, k bar, and uh, temperatures likely between 250 and 300 uh, degrees Celsius. In uh, um, Patagonia, we um, have much better uh, evidence or much better um, um, PT data for these frontally accreted rocks by um, uh, later PT pseudo sections. Uh, 
Also, uh, in the northern section, there is a retro wedge basin, um, the old Locan formation, with much lower uh, um, pressure and temperature conditions. In the high temperature, low pressure overprint, um, we get conditions of only 3K bar and temperatures between somewhat between 400 and 700 degrees Celsius. Um, okay. If this is a true metamorphic belt, we must know the uh, uh, ages and paired metamorphic belt must show the same ages of metamorphism. So we applied uh, uh, argon argon dating on white mica in mainly in metapolitic rocks, also in metabasic rocks, and they are all around uh, 300 uh, mi uh, million years, 290 to 300, but also here in the um, Eastern series that are overprinted by this high temperature, low pressure metamorphism. And also um, a, um, a uranium lead age of the um, coastal batholiths in this area shows the same age. So, um, what we see is um, frontal accretion at the same time as the metamorphic overprint in the um, uh, relic eastern part of the um, accretionary prism that is intruded by the coastal buffaloes. So a true uh, paired metamorphic belt. Uh, we also got um, uh, 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 the circuit fission track ages and apatite fission track ages, and from this we could derive uh, exhumation rates. Um, exhumation rates first started to be around 0.2 to 0.5 millimeters per year. This is actually corresponding to average erosion rates. So much lower than we observed formerly in the collisional vetch. So uh, what happens is that during um, basal accretion, um, um, uh, elevation forms at the at the uh, surface, and this is eroded. So basal accretion and uh, uh, erosion at the surface is sort of balanced. Uh, with time, we see here. <coughs> um, um, uh, with uh, uh, the ages of um, uh, cooling under uh, 280 degrees uh, are at around uh, 230 million years, around 100 million years, the cooling under 100 uh, degrees Celsius. We see here the derived uh, uh, exhumation er um, uh, rates are uh, steadily declining. The same happens in the eastern series that are uh, only heated in uh, shallow uh, depths of 3k K bar and uh, their exhumation rates is, uh, are uh, similarly very low. Okay, uh, we put all this together into a uh, uh, full-scale cross-section of the um, central uh, Chilean coastal accretion system, uh, uh, system near Constitución, the, the, um, uh, at the height where uh, this um, accretion prism is least deformed. Um, in many areas, in subduction, uh, um, uh, erosion occurs in other areas, uh, late, uh, later post uh, carboniferous uh, deformation. So we see um, uh, the uh, here the uh, um, PT path, the 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 uh, path of the uh, uh, green shifts uh, being the green tree strokes, the western series being steadily exhumed. Here the PT pass for the uh, blue schists, and here um, the, the pass for the um, um, uh, subduction channel rocks that uh, were um, subducted first. It's a bit over-exaggerated uh, and uh, dehydration here under the 
um, uh, mantle wedge does not occur simply from these subducted sediments, but also uh, the oceanic crust certainly is uh, dehydrated, and this in a, uh, is here in this uh, modeling in a um, uh, depth that is uh, appropriate for this uh, dehydration. Okay. Um, meanwhile, the eastern series are only uh, found as relics, as frontally created early relics, and they are intruded by the uh, um, uh, uh, coastal buffalos. So, all this together in a sort of time sequence. We start here with uh, the earliest, deepest uh, subduction in so this is a subduction channel under a still hot mantle. So then uh, uh, a cooling pass occurs. Um, then frontal accretion of mm, gray vacuous occurs, a horizontal flow and a ho a horizontal uh, uh, um, compression and very rapid propagation of the leading margin towards the trench. So the margin is growing by, uh, considerably by this process. And then around 310 to 300 million years, uh, the accretion mode changed to basal accretion. So the uh, uh, Western series are accreted at much uh, greater depths. And uh, here in the rear of the um, uh, uh, of the frontally accreted eastern series, intrusion occurs and uh, metamorphic, uh, low te uh, temperature metamorphic overprint. So, in the time 300 to 220 million years, uh, we get continuous basal accretion balanced by erosion. Um, uh, material is recycled into the trench. Uh, with time, the magmatic uh, arc activity is waning, and at around 220 million years, uh, the story ends. Mm, the, nothing is accreted anymore, likely due to climate change. Um, uh, cyclic mass flow uh, comes to an end, and there is a major change in the uh, margin configuration from a compressive convergent margin to an extensional uh, 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 conversion margin. So, the same sequence we have in further north, um, in the so-called in a so-called shallow slab segment, where the um, uh, the magmatic arc does not intrude here uh, near the uh, near the coast near or into the um, uh, earliest uh, frontally accreted rocks, but much further inland, in uh, a retrograde basin that uh, is found there, and uh, uh, the, 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 um, um, uh, the, the slab is uh, much, much flatter. So, again, all this happens between roughly 320 million years and ends um, at about 260 million years. Okay. Uh, ending the story, I will end this with a sort of provocating view. I often was asked in the past, uh, what is the extent and the origin of uh, Chile? Where does it come from? Uh, where is its uh, 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 ending? We have seen here in the, um, that the uh, late Paleozoic uh, margin uh, evolves more or less in, in the same way uh, from about Puerto Mont to uh, Chañaral in the north. Uh, so, with uh, different uh, uh, segments, sh to uh, shallow uh, slab uh, segments and uh, central steeper uh, slab uh, segment, but more or less, uh, we have the same evolution starting uh, in the uh, lower Carboniferous. Um, uh, south of Puerto Montt, uh, the story is quite different. Um, the margin is wider and much younger, Mesozoic. North of Antofagasta, we have a completely different um, um, underlying uh, 
uh, terrain, the Arequipa Antofaya terrain, that is actually uh, Meso uh, Mesoproterozoic terrain, Grenvillian uh, uh, terrain that is uh, extending into central Peru and uh, it's characteristic uh, and the the um, uh, margin of the, or the 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 or division Farmatinian um, uh, margin here dumps to the coast uh, up to uh, central Peru and this uh, terrain was uh, evidently um, uh, collided uh, much earlier much earlier than uh, the Ordovician times so there is a firm boundary there is a firm boundary um, uh, the extent of Kuyania is a bit dif uh, difficult. We can, f uh, in, in uh, Bohol's uh, um, uh, uh, pre-Cordillera rocks are, are found at several places, uh, in the Sa San Rafael block, for example. Also from the collisional vetch, um, there may be uh, a continuation, so metamorphic rocks uh, are found uh, further south, although the PT conditions are yet unknown. So at least roughly, this is the uh, western limit of the uh, Famatinian uh, arc. And uh, so uh, Kuyania may exceed in, in this area. Um, however, if I showed that the collisional wedge between Chilenia and Cuyania uh, is at least uh, 300 kilometers long. And the PT conditions, um, uh, uh, the high pressure, con the Devonian high pressure conditions in the Guagoras complex, uh, complex have the equivalent in the south, near Bariloche. So it's likely that this collisional wedge extends. South of the Guagoras complex, we find evidence of a Devonian um, a magmatic arc, also in, uh, in the south, uh, north of Bariloche in two places. So it seems that there is an extensive uh, uh, Devonian magmatic arc under cover. <coughs> So, and also the um, um, Devonian margin was evidently segmented into a amagmatic and a magmatic uh, segment. Okay, if we take this here as an eastern boundary of Chilenia, I would end up with 2,000 kilometers of extent of Chilenia, underlying almost the entire central Chile, and uh, with an width of about three, uh, 200, 300 kilometers. So at the first glance, it might seem improbable, but I uh, um, ingressed uh, um, um, uh, is a sit uh, the, the recent situation at the Pacific margin in California at the same scale, exactly the same scale. Here, presently, the East Pacific rise is cutting into the continent in the Bay of California, producing um, oceanic crust. The, the whole ends here at this famous San Andreas Fault. In some mil million uh, uh, years, this will propagate and finally uh, separate uh, a sort of microcontinent that has more or less this extent of my proposed Chilenia. So, 2,000 kilometers and sort of two to 300 uh, uh, kilometers wet, uh, width. So, Chilenia might have been cut out originally out of uh, Laurentia. It also might have been cut out of Cuyania during it, uh, Cuyania's approach to, to, to uh, uh, Gondwana. Or uh, it might have been stayed in this sort of uh, peninsula stage. So, for some time, some part of uh, Chilenia might have been simply a uh, uh, peninsula to, to Cuyania uh, with a, a, a relatively small um, uh, uh, oce uh, oceanic uh, crust in between. So, uh, 
This is just uh, to keep you thinking, maybe fighting and discussing uh, uh, around it. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. <clears throat>
si alguna vez pensó en la posibilidad de que Chileña fuera parte de Patagonia, que fuera parte del mismo continente, o sea, la prolongación de Chileña, lo que se ve en todo el margen sudoccidental de Gonguana son exactamente las mismas edades que se ven en el margen de, de Chileña. Una deformación que comienza en el Devónico y continúa lo superior. No sé, capaz eh, es, eh, es, te refieres a ese eh, datos de Juan Cruz Martínez, que encontró ese... Sí. Uh, 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 rocas de alta presión um, con el mismo edad de uh, 390 como, como en, en, la, uh, en el uh, complejo Guagarás. Bueno, eh, es definición, si sí, eso ya es Patagonia, eh, eso he mostrado en, en el último, eh, en el último imagen, es más o menos a la altura de Puerto Montt. So it, 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 uh, es el punto muy parecido a eh, eh, Guagras, pero el punto más al sur austral que conocemos. Sí, eh, muy probable que el, el, el parte de, el, el, el complejo de colisión de eh, Cuyaña Chilena eh, extendió, extendió a este punto. Ese es el punto más austral. En el sur, el sur de eh, Puerto Montt, por supuesto, también existen eh, prismas de acreción, pero los edades son mucho más eh, jóvenes. Eh, lo que ocurre eh, al este de eso, no sé, no sé. Um, Entonces, eh, me voy a... a... Es para mí, un punto más austral de, de eh, evidencia de... De posible evidencia de ese eh, complejo de colisión y además en esa zona también hay evidencias de un arco magmático devónico que es, también ocurre un poquito al sur del complejo de Guagaras. So, así que el margen devónico puede extender desde eh, la, la cordillera frontal hasta eh, la altura de, uh, de uh, ah, Pariloche. Es posible. Hay, hay, hay dos evidencias, por lo menos. Voy a, voy a aprovechar la, la audiencia y a los colegas, entonces, para que me ayuden a pensar la posibilidad de que Chileña y Patagonia hayan sido parte del mismo continente, ¿sí? Para que podamos pensarlos entre, um, entre todos. todos. Bueno, hay, hay, hay mucha cubierta. <ríe> Puedes también pensar que antes de, eh, eh, de emplazamiento de Chilenia, habían más eh, microcontinentes. Por ejemplo, si van al norte de, de las Apalachias, en Norteamérica. Eh, ahora eh, la gente ha encontrado un montón de eh, microcontinentes. En, eh, eh, también yo estuve envolvido en detalle en uh, uh, estudiar esos uh, uh, complejos de colisión allá. So, uh, uh, la cosa que era más complejo, complejo que la gente pensaba antes. So, hay, hay, hay más microcontinentes, más complejos de colisión. Y desgraciadamente en Sudamérica, entre <ríe> la, uh, uh, la precordillera en, en Argentina y Patagonia, hay muy poca información, muy, mucha cubierta. Aún más cubierta debajo de, eh, de la corriera principal aún. Así que tenemos que contar con pocas informaciones eh, locales. Bien. ¿Puedo hacer un comentario? Es, es no, hay, hay gente que sí. piensa que Patagonia, otra gente que piensa que Patagonia es un microcontinente eh, mismo que piensan que 
ähm, in el Massiso, Norte de, de Patagonia, ähm, hay un, una estructura este-oeste con ähm, rocas alcalinas. Ähm, la gente piensa que... Ähm, eh, eh, que eso es también una zona de colisión por la ocurrencia simplemente de, de magmas eh, alcalinas eh, pero eh, por ejemplo encontramos allá eh, un arco eh, zamatiniano que es, extiende hacia el sur también hay evidencias que rocas pampeanas extienden hacia el sur Um, la continuación de esa estructura este-oeste um, también estudiado solamente en puntos eh, es más o menos eh, um, una condenación hacia el um, si sí, sí, se continúa hacia el, el margen chileno um, se eh, eh, ve ahí la eh, falla eh, de Puren o falla de, eh, ¿cómo es ahora? Eh, la Nalwe. Eh, la Nalwe. Muy, eh, he estado muy intensivamente, Pancho eh, Hervé, eh, 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 y es no, no una simple falla. Yo par me parece que ese es, era originalmente un, uh, una falla de, um, um, uh, ¿cómo es? de transforma que, um, de, uh, que uh, entra desde el, uh, la corteza oceánica hacia el continente. Más tarde se, se uh, uh, convierte a una uh, um, falla de cesallamiento. Um, pienso que el argumento mayor es, para mí, es el mapeo que Pancho hizo en 1977. Ahí se ve que el um, arco magmático no es simplemente desplazado, pero eh, que el arco está, eh, el metamorfismo de ese arco está imprimiendo a esa, eh, esa falla. So, así, la, esa falla de uh, la Nalue o línea de Puren eh, es separado simplemente dos segmentos um, de la, um, del margen. Uh, con diferente geometría de, um, um, de, uh, del, del slab. Um, sí, un, un uh, uh, shadow slab y un steeper slab. Bueno, si es así, si es un, 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 una falla de transforma, es uh, cortando muy... Um, uh, uh, hacia el continente uh, pienso que esos um, rocas alcalinas simplemente ocurren intruyeron porque es una uh, porque uh, puede ser en una uh, uh, falla de transforma es una idea para mí todavía la, la evidencia es no claro que esa es una zona de colisión entre dos uh, continentes Todavía estoy uh, saulos para eso. <ríe> Nunca fui a esa zona y parece que no tengo la oportunidad de, de estudiar ahí, pero um, es una simple idea. Es una reservación. Antes que también tenía la misma, un poquito la misma reservación um, en contra de esa uh, zona uh, um, de, uh, al, uh, al oeste de, de la um, precordillera argentina. Antes que uh, ese cambió completamente <ríe> cuando me fui a estudiar ahí. Es todo lo que, que puedo decir. <ríe> es nada más que idea
Yo, yo, yo quería comentar, Renata, que tú, la hipótesis que ustedes presentaron en un congreso en Chile también fue, ¿no? De, de que Chilenia y Patagonia podrían estar unidos. Es una o, o, eh, opción interesante. Mm. Porque difícil de demostrar completamente, pero también difícil de, de descartar. Entonces, es sí. muy estimulante para para realizar estudios más de detalle eh, en el asunto. Sí. Tenemos esta zona inmensa, con mm. poca información finalmente. Entonces, nosotros ahora último, y, y, y quiero concluir con eso, hemos visto que hacia el sur de Puerto Montt, por ejemplo, y, y un poco hacia el norte de Puerto Montt, hay muchas rocas magmáticas, plutónicas, devónicas, en la uh -huh. costa de Chile, sí, que sí, no sí, conocíamos sí, sí. hace 10 años. Es... Es, es el mencionado, ¿no? Entonces estamos ahí también pensando cómo interpretarlo. Y hemos eh, inicialmente pensado que puede ser un elemento diferente de, de chilenia, que lo hemos llamado por el momento chaitenia. Porque uh -huh. cerca de chaitenia ah, pero, están esos... Pero es, es más al sur. Más al sur tanto más al sur que Puerto Norte. Es más al sur, claro, pero entonces nos, entre medio no sabemos y Chaitenia entonces es otro elemento que podría ser reemplazar a Chilenia hacia el sur porque es un elemento sí, que no existe o ahí el, justo mm. el terreno o el, o, o el pedacito que nos falta la pieza que nos falta para completar el rompecabezas entre Chilenia Chaitenia y Patagonia Claro, claro. Sí. sí, la cosa, ese es el proceso ¿no? de, de investigación. Primero, eh, eh, la gente está introduciendo terrenos. El terreno es nada más que un cierto, eh, una cierta zona con una evolución parecida que es diferente que en otra zona. Con más información, con encuentro, por ejemplo, de rocas ofilíticas, de eh, condiciones de un verdadero cuna de colisión. Eh, otro, eh, con más eh, dataciones. Eh, eh, algunos de esos terrenos convierten a ser microcontinentes. Eh, Pienso por lo menos en, 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 en la zona de, eh, eh, que he mostrado en, en, en la zona de la precordillera eh, hacia el oeste. We have, eh, tenemos evidencia de existencia de dos microcontinentes. Esto es bastante seguro, Cuyania y Chilenia. La extensión de esos microcontinentes es más o menos eh, interpretación eh, de los datos eh, que existen. Algún, eh, eso es que quería mostrar eh, el último eh, imagen que he mostrado. Bueno, eh, así estamos en, en, todos, eh, en todo el mundo, especialmente en los Appalachians. Eh, Uh, hay, hay muchos terrenos en, encontrados que convirtieron ahora al uh, estado de um, micro continentes, micro placas. So, uh, así, uh, Avalonia, Ganderia, uh, Dashwoods uh, um, y otros. <coughs> es, un, es un proceso de obtener más, más, más y más datos. Así, creo que eh, eh, por la gente eh, que, eh, que ahora siguen, eh, queda muchísimo, <risa> muchísimo que hacer. No, no estamos. <risa> Arne, acá tenemos una pregunta en el chat. Eh, Paulo Quesada pregunta si cuando la geometría de la zona de subducción es de alto ángulo, tipo Mariana, si existe el desarrollo de un prisma de acreción y qué variaciones podrían existir comparado con un sistema de flat slab. Eh, era un poquito muy rápido esa bueno, pregunta. Un poquito. Eh, eh, 
eh, eh, Florencia, estás, eh, tú estás preguntando, ¿no? Sí. Eh, no te veo. Una pregunta ah, ahora, ahora, Juan, ahora. Mejor si, si te veo entender mejor. <risas> Preguntan si cuando la geometría de la zona de subducción es de alto ángulo, ¿Sí? existe el desarrollo de un prisma de acreción. Eh, la existencia de un prisma de acreción depende del clima. Es eh, porque eh, un verdadero prisma de acreción necesita mucho, eh, muchos sedimentos. Eh, al momento eh, hay un verdadero prisma de acreción desarrollando en más al sur de Patagonia, en Patagonia chilena. Eh, ahí tenemos un, un clima muy húmedo. Uh, uh, caliente, uh, um, frío y en uh, zonas uh, más altas uh, una zona, es una zona niva, uh, existe una zona nival so, así muchos uh, sedimentos uh, son producidos muchos sedimentos son uh, depositados en, en, en el trench en la, la, la fosa <coughs> Y um, así existe una posibilidad de, de uh, obtener un prisma de acreción porque también um, la, la pregunta continúa y dice qué variación podría existir comparado con, un, con una subducción tipo flat slab. Um, um, flat slab, uh, steep slab, <laughs> and, uh, flat slab es es más o menos esa geometría es dictado por, eh, creo, por la eh, eh, tasa de convergencia eh, en, en la placa oceánica. Eh, y también, o oh, aún más, no, aún más, perdón, aún más por la edad de, de, la, de la placa. So, la, la, una placa jo, uh, uh, joven es muy livianito, um, Uh, y una placa vieja muy pesada y la placa pesada está entrando al, al, al manto más, más fácil ¿sí? con un uh, uh, ángulo de, de subducción más más uh, 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 más uh, más grande, más grande sí, sí. pero uh, esa diferencia entre slab, magmatic flat slab and, uh, 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 y un ángulo produciendo uh, uh, magmatic arcs uh, no ocurre solamente en, en, en la situación uh, actual del margen andino, pero uh, también durante toda la, uh, la evolución de los Andes en, en Diferente, uh, en diferentes edades, en diferentes uh, zonas de los Andes, es, es, es una cosa muy típica. Acá, eh, quien, quien hizo la pregunta, eh, la replantea y pregunta si la geometría de la subducción controla en algo el desarrollo de ese prisma de acreción. Si el prisma está relacionado o controlado por la geometría de la subducción. Um, no, no tanto. Um, bueno, eh, eh, la acreción ocurre solamente si hay material de acreccionar. <risa> um, um, el, el, el ángulo de, de, de la zona de subducción eh, controla donde eh, la, eh, el marco Uh, el arco magmático está uh, desarrollando. Um, um, y uh, um, el tipo de acreción así hemos, uh, que he mostrado el, el, uh, acreción frontal versus basal está controlado um, más por el um, estado uh, uh, térmico, o sea, por la, um, el gradiente uh, actual en, en, el, uh, uh, en, en todo el sistema. Uh, 
So, ese quería mostrar con esa pantalla, con, los, con la dehidratación. Um, uh, 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 Acreción frontal ocurre primero siempre. También en, en esos uh, modelos análogos está seguido por uh, acreción uh, basal. En ese, uh, uh, al inicio we, uh, tenemos una, un gradiente más alto, entonces material puede ingresar solamente um, a poca profundidad um, hasta que están um, en una zona donde dehidratación es posible. Um, uh, agua sale, agua uh, hace el, el, la roca más floja y uh, ayuda la, el proceso de acreción. Uh, si todo el margen um, enfría, que es muy, muy típico en, 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 en muchos márgenes observados en muchos margen, eh, márgenes eh, eh, en todo el mundo eh, entonces eh, el material eh, las gra gravacas eh, pueden eh, llegar a, a, hasta una zona más profunda eh, hasta que eh, están en una zona donde dehidratación es posible entonces están acreditados en una profundidad más profunda que um, durante el proceso de uh, acreción frontal. Bien. Eh, bueno, eh, Flor, no sé si hay más comentarios en, en el chat de mí. No, en el chat de mí eh, solamente tenemos saludos del doctor Carlos Singolani, que está muy agradecido por la exposición. Y le deja un saludo al doctor Wilner y agradece a todos los colegas que participaron de la discusión y a los organizadores. Y luego ah, un saludo a la doctora Renata Tomesoli que le da también, le agradece por la charla y le desea unas buenas tardes eh, después bueno, de esta, gracias. esta charla que nos ha brindado. No, la, bien, la, es, muy, es muy oscuro ahora aquí. Ya, <risa> <risa> yeah, yeah, es completamente oscuro ahora. <risa> Pero un lindo, lindo eh, tarde eh, de verano. O sea, sí, vamos a continuar capaz con un vino en el jardín. <risa> <risa> muy bien. <risa> Descansamente no puedo invitar a todos ustedes. <risa> La doctora Melissa Angeletti también le deja un saludo al doctor Arné y le agradece también eh, por la charla y a todos por la, por la organización. La doctora Lina Tibaldi también le agradece a Arne por su charla tan interesante. Así bueno, que no sé, Flor, si hay... Y disculpen los, los eh, eh, problemas técnicos al inicio. No hay problema. Gracias a usted por, por tomarse el tiempo de armar esta, esta charla tan interesante y por brindarnos su conocimiento eh, a través de, de esta presentación. Que agradecemos mucho. Bueno, Entonces, gracias a ustedes para escuchar. Agradecemos a todos quienes eh, participaron.